I'm 19 Keys, and this is High Level Conversation. The library. The library. Like I said, Amechi has sent me a plethora of interviews about Israel, so I know what his stands are. So I don't want to sit there and debate a man when I already know where he stands, right? That's my belief, particularly. And as I was talking to some of my peers that I reach out to and ask them, what would you ask? A lot of them kept coming back to economics, right? What you going to do for the middle class? Where's the opportunities, right? What is the future of AI and the reskilling of America, right? Then it kind of goes into what kind of man are you, right? Are you a part of the elite class? Because you do come from an oligarch family, an American oligarch family known as the Kennedys, um, even though that, you know, your family is not backing you in this particular race. Uh, do you think your desire for power is based on? I think I might have asked you this question before in a similar way, but I'm just really thinking about your past. Right. And how power has been ripped from your family in unfair ways by the government, by the system. And I think that that definitely has to inspire your fight, right, against big corporations, against government systems. But now do you think part of, you know, what's been robbed out of your legacy is what you want to fulfill? And then why isn't that your family is in complete support of your campaign? Is it this that they would rather be on the side where they think will win? Or do they actually believe in you? Do y'all still communicate? I was curious about that. I mean, my struggle is to keep my ego out of my decision making. You know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, and so, you know, I, I'm doing it. I um, If you think if you started to go higher up in a polls, you get the endorsement? You mean with my family? With your family. Um, well, you know, my family, first of all, I have a huge family. So a lot of the family, I would say almost half of them are supporting me. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, you know, there's a, a few of them that have been outspoken against me. And listen, I have five members of my family who work for the Biden administration. Mm. Oh, and Biden's a long-term friend of my family. I've known him for 40 years. Um, and... So they and they're also worried that I'm going to get Trump or red black. You know, they're they're worried I'm yeah. going to take votes away from Biden and give them to Trump. Well, they think that's very dangerous, and that I should just, you know, stay in line. Right. And uh, but Biden wants to decide. So do 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 you think Biden and my my job is to love my family? even when they're doing things that could be hurtful to me. Yeah. And to be an example myself, we need to live in a country where we can have a dialogue with our, each other, where we can differ passionately on issues, but we can still see each other as Americans and love each other. That's what I try to do with my family. And, you know, listen, I'm doing what I believe that I need to do. And I think everybody involved in the campaign feels like we're on a kind of cosmic journey and but ultimately, the outcome is in God's hands. If he makes me president, and I'm going to change this country dramatically. But if he doesn't, I'll go back to doing what I'm doing or doing the next thing, and I'll be content inside. I'm not, you know, I feel like I don't have the ego in this decision, that I'm pushing the rock up the hill because I'm bit, that, that's my duty. My father, I don't know if I told you this story, but my dad, about two weeks before he died, gave me a book by Camus, who is an existentialist. The book is called The Plague, and it's about a plague that is ravaging a North African city, and the city is under quarantine. Nobody can go in and out. The plague is killing everybody. It's highly contagious, and a lot of this book takes place in the mind of a doctor. Mm who's locked in his bedroom. He knows if he goes out, he's probably going to get the plague and die. He's telling himself, we don't know how to treat this. We don't know anything about it. I can't help these people. And there's another part of him say, your job is to go out and console people, even if you can't help them physically recover. This is who you are. This is your dharma. And ultimately, he goes out. But um, Camus, who wrote that, was an existentialist, and they were the legatees of the 
of the Stoics in ancient Greek and Rome. The Stoic movement was a movement that basically said, do your duty, embrace hardship, embrace suffering. These are gifts to us. The great, uh, the great iconic hero of the Stoic movement was Sisyphus. Sisyphus had done something for humanity, and he was cursed by the gods to push a big boulder up a hill and over the other side. But he could never get it quite over. When he'd get to the top, it would always roll back on him, and he was doomed to do that for eternity. So all day long, he'd push the boulder up the hill. When he got to the top, it would roll back on him and mangle him. And he had to spend all night walking down the hill, he shoulder the boulder again, and push up the hill. In the mind of most people, he's a miserable guy because he's got to do that for eternity. But in the minds of the Stoics, he was a happy man because he knew what his duty was and he put his shoulder to the stone and the outcomes were irrelevant to him. He knew he had to push. It was up to the gods whether he ever got it over the hill. But his job was to be grateful and content and happy that he knew what his duty was. And my father gave me that book right two weeks before he died. He'd given me a lot of poems and mm. books to read. But because he gave it to me and he said to me with a special intensity, I want you to read this. Uh, after he was killed, I spent, I read the book multiple times trying to unlock the mystery of why he thought this was so important to me. But I understand it now. It's about moving your ego, about not having expectations in life, about taking what you're given, what the duty it is, and and uh, and pushing the rock up the hill. And we've all got to push our own rock up the hill, right? So that struggle we need to learn to derive joy from and use suffering and use challenges as touchstones for spiritual growth and understand that every hardship we're given is not a crisis, they're all tasks. And they're tasks that are meant to get us to where our creator wants us to go, which is a stage of enlightenment. A stage of enlightenment. You're a very philosophical man, especially in your roundabout way of answering and viewing things. There's so many different things that kind of go through my head. And unless we have an unlimited amount of time, I can't really draw out all of the subjects that I wanted to draw out. Right. So we had to have a high level over a bunch of different things. But what I want from the people that's listening, I want to ask you all, what do you think about the candidate now that he sat here and had these high level conversations? I will say that, you know, they reached out to us. Um, and I respect that. I've seen him on multiple black platforms, right? I've seen him on multiple white podcasts and he sat there and respectfully answered all of the questions that represents something new. I endorse no candidates, right? Um, I believe that local elections matter and I believe that self elections matter. You have to self elect yourself to take care of your own business. I believe that America will always be a corporate capitalism machine. I believe that you do need people in there that are going not just say what you want to hear. So this is why I do respect the fact that he know that wasn't the answers that I wanted, but he didn't give the answer that I wanted. He gave what I believe he believe is his truth. Right. I'm not a person that likes to debate and going back and forth because I already figure out what a person is thinking. So for me, I only want the people to sit there and be like, all right, I get what his stance is on this. I get what his stance is on this. Either you got clarity or you didn't. If you didn't get clarity, then there's no reason to go with that leadership because when a leader communicates, they should clarify. Right. So you can make decisions. And so I'm at this place now where it's like, you know, thank you for coming on high level conversations. And my only my only thing now is. What do you think? Because that's all that matters. What do the people think? I try to reserve my biasness, but it oozes because I have so much bias when it comes to America. I believe the moment that you get caught up in the belief that the political system is going to give you freedom, um, justice, quality, liberty, equity. That's when you have lost sight of, you know, what's reality. Because I don't believe that it was ever set for that. The government is there to govern, um, you know, your money and your mind. 
And if that's what you want them to do, continue to go down that path, go vote when it's time to go vote and go pick your savior. But this country going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly. I don't see a safe election coming up. I don't see a peaceful election coming up. I don't see a peaceful resolution to these wars and these issues and these problems that's going on. I will say a lot of the stuff that he talked about, I didn't see Trump talk. I don't see Trump talking about. I don't see Joe Biden talking about, right? Going against Big Pharma, going against these companies that's poisoning America, going against the FDA, suing these people. You know, people voted for Trump because he's a business entrepreneur, right, president. That does go along with the populist agenda. And black people want wealth right now. So when you start talking that wealth talk, we listen. Biden has not laid out any singular plan that we care about. He seems to be in this constant state of senility and defense mode. Right. And they're still heavily just leaning on. I'm going to get the black vote. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy decided to run as an independent. Most people believe that he was just stealing votes away from uh, Biden and is going to help the chances of Donald Trump. Right. So for me, when I look at this race, whether it's him in the race or going against Biden, Trump seems like he's going to be the winner unless something radical happens in this country. Right. Where the people decide to and and he has this um, debate with Trump and Biden and he makes them look silly on the main stage and the people something in them changes. But it's very hard to change MAGA country because once people believe in Trump, it's like a religion. Right. Same thing with Republicans and Democrats. So I respect the man's fight. Right. Um, I, I, I'm not in it to make friends. I'm not in it to believe everything about a man. But I will say this. I respect the fact that he went to the Nation of Islam. Right. And helped them fight and give them information about, you know, vaccines. Right. Give them information about autism challenges. Right. Challenge Dr. Fauci. Challenge the institution. I respect the hell out of that. Right. More than, you know. If you're going to jump into Crown Society, you're saying that I represent power, I represent knowledge of self. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready with me. Stepping in the name of drip, get ready. I wear the crown to just symbolize, like, I know who I am, I know why I'm here, I know my purpose. It's abundance, it's royalty, it's prosperity, it's energy. It's it in. Yeah. I gotta walk with my head held high because you gotta see this and you gotta see this. I believe that if anybody wants to be able to protect their mind and be able to think freely, you gotta get Crown Society today, man. Blue pill, the color palette's all black. James Bond mix with Malcolm X and my Che Guevara era. I'm 19 Keys and this is a high level conversation. The library. The library.